thank you. Um, that could be interpreted as I was responsible for Elasticsearch. That is not the case. I work at a company that is responsible for Elasticsearch. So different, two, two, two different things. Um, so what, what we are viewing right now is basically a live feed uh, from my microphone. I have a, a microphone pack here that is sending on 739.8 uh, megahertz. Uh, it's all digital, so you can't see any changes in volume as I speak. Um, but if, if I were to turn this off, which I'm not going to do, you will see it, it would just drop to zero. Um, before I start, I'm going to tell you a little bit, uh, I'm going to tell you a story. Um, so, oh, by the way, the, the, the way that I'm picking up this is because I have this uh, radio here, uh, this antenna that is picking up uh, that signal. And so, about a year ago, I bought this uh, remote controlled car and I got this uh, radio, which, as you can see right now, can, can receive radio, but it can also send radio. So I went on a mission to kind of figure out how this worked and figure out if I could decode the signal that, uh, you know, normally you get like one of these, which is the remote control for it, uh, and decode the, the data that is going back and forth. Um, and it turned out actually re really cool. I'm just going to show you how, how that turned out. I'm going to just extend this a little bit. I'm going to put this down here because there is something with the orientation of the antenna and the, the car. Could maybe one of the, one of the cameras pick this up? Can we, is it possible to get that, that camera there up on that screen? Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Um, but that, 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 that's, that was just the camera. That was not me. <laughs> I didn't do that. I just asked politely. Um, so I, I've written the program. I'm going I'm to put this, this here so you can see I'm not using that. I've, I've written a program where I can use my keyboard to basically control the car. And that's so it, it can drive in, in oops. <laughs> Come over here. There we go. OK. So <laughs> So we can, we, yeah, we're back on the screen. That's perfect. Um, it's called Monster Drift. You can do NPM install Monster Drift. Uh, <laughs> And then, then you can control any, any toy car in the world. Um, and so me and my friend Matthias, we were playing around with it. And one thing is you just control it with a keyboard. Another thing is that you can actually program in tricks because it's all software. So you can just like, program a series of like turn the wheel, drive forward. you know. So, so we, we made like a, a, uh, a thing where it would like skid out and it would like put in reverse. Uh, turn the wheels and, and go in reverse. Um, so, so you can just, he just presses the button and then it's. <laughs> so, so I was playing with this, is, this is about, this is a year ago. I, I was playing around with this and I was thinking, that's all cool, but how does this actually, like if you really want to transmit a lot of data, this is very simple data that we're transmitting to the car. If you want to transmit a lot of data, how, how will that work? So um, that's basically what this talk is about. Um, my name is Thomas Watson. I do a lot of open source stuff, some really obscure as this. You can uh, look me up on GitHub. Uh, I, I work uh, with Node.js at Elastic, so usually all the stuff I do is Node, which is also why I was thinking, hey, let's try to do this in JavaScript, because why not? I'm a, I'm a JavaScript developer. So. Um, and you can, you can follow me on, on Twitter uh, and, or ask me questions there as well. Uh, so my talk is called Building a Radio Data Network with Node.js, um, which sounds super fancy. Uh, it could also be um, uh, re-implementing Wi-Fi and software, uh, because why not? Um, so the, the whole f th this field is called software-defined radio, and it's basically where you take a lot of the hardware out of the radio. You're basically only left with an antenna, uh, a few amplifiers, some filters, 
And then basically what you get over the, the, the USB cable here is basically just raw packets from the antenna. Uh, basically, uh, you get values of voltages coming in on the antenna. That's all you get. And if you want to transmit a radio wave, you just basically do it in, in reverse. You send uh, basically a buffer of, of values that you want the antenna to, to have. So it's, just, it's, it's really, really, really low level. But it means you can basically implement anything you want. Um, so software-defined radio is, is, not, is not anything new. Uh, these guys have been at it for, for, for many years, uh, but they are super, super expensive. You need to be a researcher to get, to get them the money to, to basically uh, buy one of these. These are $5,000 and up. Um, but then something happened. Um, this guy came along. Uh, this is basically a TV tuner thing you can buy on Amazon for uh, not that much money. You can uh, listen to a radio. You can watch TV, digital TV on your computer. Uh, it's super cheap, uh, 10 to $20. Uh, and the interesting part is that it contains this real tech chip that turns out to be super hackable. Uh, which means that you can basically uh, change it from its default settings to basically receive any, uh, any radio signals between 24 megahertz and 1.7 gigahertz. Um, and you get the same kind, kind of like raw packets from the antenna. Uh, but they still only receive. So then this came along, which is uh, the radio I have here. Uh, the HackRF, it's uh, a DAPA-funded project, uh, open source hardware. A little bit more expensive, but not the 5,000 that we saw before. This is uh, 299. Uh, so, and this can also tr uh, tr transmit. And it can receive and transmit on any frequency from between 1 megahertz and 6 gigahertz. So the entire Wi-Fi spectrum, uh, anything you like, FM. Um, so before we get into um, into the, uh, all the, the fun things. Uh, I have to go with some, a little bit of Radio 101. Uh, don't worry if, I mean, this has taken me a long time to, to kind of internalize. So uh, don't worry if you don't get everything. Uh, you can always ask me questions later if, if you're inter interested in learning more. Um, but, but this talk is basically my journey in discovering how these things work. So this is uh, a sine wave radio wave. Uh, all radio waves are basically some form of, of, of sine wave um, or multiple sine waves. Uh, of course, you can change the, the, the frequency of the sine wave, which means that the peaks and the valleys get, get further or closer uh, together. Or you can change the amplitude, which is basically the, the power that you're transmitting with, uh, which basically makes the, the peaks and the valleys uh, differ in this direction instead. Um, and then you can combine multiple sine waves into more complex waves. Uh, and this is basically the trick, because making sine waves, computers are pretty good at that, uh, generating the, the math for how to generate sine waves. And if you want to make a complex wave in a computer, what you do is basically you just generate enough of these sine waves to basically give you the complex wave when you add all the waves together. So the next, uh, so, so w when I kind of learned this, I was like, okay, that's cool. The next thing I wanted to figure out is how do I, if I want to send data over between two radios, um, how do I pack it into kind of a, how do I take bytes and then produce radio waves? Uh, and we use this thing called modulation. Um, and modulation is nothing new. Wikipedia have this really blah, 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 blah thing about it. Um, but we have been using kind of modulation for a long time, if you think about it. It's, it's basically modulation is like you, you have some message and you have a carrier wave, you have a, tr a transport that you want to put that message onto. So you change the transport in a way so that, that people viewing it at the other end can kind of decode, basically work in reverse and decode the message. So we've been doing this for, for millennia, um, not with waves, but with smoke. The first time we actually did it with waves what was when the telegraph was, was invented. This is a, a telegraph key. And this is a very simple, either the wave is there or it's not there. It's on or it's off. Um, uh, but it was still over wires. It wasn't until AM radio uh, was invented. It wasn't called AM at the time. It was just called crystal radio or radio uh, that we actually managed to do this over uh, radio waves. Um, 
And the way AM works is super, super simple. By the way, fun fact, back in the days, like a, 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 a piece of equipment like this does not require any power, no battery, no nothing. It works from the power it's getting on the antenna to a and then takes that power, that voltages that comes on the antenna to basically make audible sound. No power included or needed. So the, the way that you take my voice, encode it onto a radio wave and transport it, well, you could just uh, do as this microphone is doing. It's taking my voice and it's turning it into electric signals. And you could take those the electric signals and put it directly to an antenna. The problem is that they're moving so slow, so the antenna would have to be huge. It's, uh, the, 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 um, the shorter the, uh, the wavelength, the shorter the antenna. That's why your phone uh, ca can operate with a smaller antenna than, for example, an FM radio, because it operates at a higher frequency. Uh, so the barrier was to how do we shrink this slow-moving human voice wave into a fast-moving wave we can send over an antenna that is relatively small. And they came up with this thing called AM, where you take a carrier signal, the, the middle one, that's just an oscillating wave, and you take the slow-moving wave, which is, for example, your voice, and you modulate the carrier wave to kind of fit the amplitude, uh, you're using the amplitude uh, to kind of mimic the, the way the, uh, the slow moving wave uh, works or moves. And then basically you do the reverse and then you have the slow moving wave again and you can just put it into a speaker and you can hear the, the sound. Um, then a little bit later, FM radio came along, and uh, FM radio does something a little bit more complicated. It's, it's changing the frequency of, of the wave, of the carrier wave, instead of the amplitude. Uh, it means it's a little bit more, uh, it, it doesn't have as much static and, uh, and stuff, so it's a more cleaner signal, but it's a little bit harder to encode and decode. But that's all fine. We're talking digital modulation. We are all computer people. We are talking how do we get bits over a network. So if we jump back to this guy, if you think about it, th this is the most simple form of digital modulation. Either it's on or it's off. It's like a zero or a one. Uh, and it's also just called on-off keying, which is still kind of AM. It's still amplitude modulation, but it's a really simple form of amplitude modulation where either there is a signal or there's no signal. There, there is a carrier wave or there is no carrier wave. Um, so, and each bit is what we call one symbol. And it, which means that the symbol rate is equal to the bit rate. But, but the trick is, that the thing, we, the thing we, if we really want to push a lot of data over this, we want to figure out a way to encode more bits into a single symbol. And, and that was, the, that was the, the, the thing I was trying to figure out, how do you do this? Um, and when you work with digital modulation, there's basically three types, uh, three base types that you then combine in different ways uh, to, to achieve this, this, uh, this thing with having multiple bits into one symbol. You have amplitude shift keying, which is your AM. You have frequency shift keying, which is your FM. And then you have a phase shift keying, where you're changing uh, mid-flight, basically. Uh, you're, you're changing where the peak is and the valley is, so you kind of like like, uh, like, like fast forwarding and say, oh, instead of the wave is going like this, and then it's coming down, and then you expect when it's down here, then it should go up next. Uh, but then you can just do a phase modulation and then jump directly up here and then kind of continue. And you can use that also to encode uh, data. How many of you have, uh, of you have used one of these? That's, that's awesome. I, th this is what's kind of kind of a, a later model, right? 56k. I remember like the 14k and the 9.6k. Like really, really slow modems. The, the reason why it's called a 56k modem is because it's it's sending 56,000 bits per second, um, but it's also referred to as an 8,000 baud modem. What is 8,000? It means that it can send 8,000 symbols a second, which means that it's doing something where it's sending seven bits per symbol. So for e each change of the radio wave, it, it can kind of encode seven, se seven bits into that, that change. And I'm going to skip a lot of uh, things here and jump, jump directly to the, to the interesting part, which is uh, QAM. 
uh, quarter amplitude modulation, which basically everything uses today. You're, you're the phone in your pocket, the Wi-Fi, uh, the satellites in space, they all use this form of modulation because it's super, super efficient at, at packing bits very close together. Do you guys remember trigonometry? <laughs> One guy. <laughs> I, I, did, I, I had to read up on this as well, but don't worry. It, it's, uh, we're not going to concern ourselves too much with it, but we just have to remember one thing, that if we take an angle and take the sine of that angle, we get a point on the y-axis. And if you take the cosine of that, that angle, we get a point on the x-axis. That's all we have to remember. Um, and if you combine the two, of course, we have a point on this circle. Um, so what is a sine wave? Well, it's basically just the, y, uh, the point on the y-axis mo moving up and down, right? Um, and a cosine wave is basically a point on the x-axis moving back and forward. And we can use this to our advantage. Um, we have now a point that's spinning round and round and round. Um, and we can use this to basically, if we're really clever with the timing on where that point is at a, at a specific time, we can put that point at different locations. And as long as the sender and the receiver agree on when to look, then we, kn then we know exactly where this point is, and we can use that, that to our advantage. So basically, we can say whenever it's in the upper left corner, we, that's a zero, 01. Whenever it's in the upper right corner, that's a 11010. One, zero, zero, one, zero. So now we, as long as we agree that the sender and receiver went to look, now we actually managed to encode two bits into one symbol. Uh, but that's called 4-cram. There's also 16-cram. There is 256-cram, which is uh, 8 bits. Uh, so that's basically a full byte for each symbol. Uh, there is even, even higher standards. Um, and as long as we just agree when to look in time, we get these slices, moments in time, where the point is at a specific place, we can, we can send symbols super, super fast. Um, but this is radio, there can be interference. So we need to, fi uh, w w when I discovered this, I was like, oh, this is cool, and I could not get anything to work. So uh, I, I found out that I also need to account for the interference, basically. So there is a, uh, there is a, a thing called uh, error correction codes. And error correction codes is nothing new. It's been used uh, for ages. It was first, the, f the first like, really famous one is the Golay code, which was invented in uh, 1949. It was used on the Voyager, uh, Saturn, and Jupiter missions in the, in the late 70s. Uh, there's also Hamming codes that you probably heard about. It's, all, it's used in your ECC memory in your servers. And the reason why it's called ECC memory is for because error correcting code. Uh, we have Reed Mueller, co Reed Mueller codes, which was used on the Mariner spacecraft. And then we have uh, a Reed Solomon code, which is used everywhere today in CDs, DVDs, Blue Ways, and QR codes. If you if you have, if a QR code is a little bit uh, dirty or you cover a little bit of it, your camera can still read it because it's it's basically figuring out what the missing bits are because of of, of using these codes. Um, and, but today everybody is using turbo codes. So the phone in your pocket, um, uh, deep space satellites all use turbo codes today. Uh, to, to recover wrong bits that, that have been uh, distorted during, during transport. Um, the cool thing is we, are, we have NPM, so we don't have to figure out all the math about this. We just do NPM install read Solomon, and, and we're good to go. So basically, I took, it, th th this took me a long time to figure out. But I took all this, and I put together a little demo for you. And I'm going to hope that this works. Um, so I built an Electron app. Uh, the reason why I built an Electron app is because I, I, I wanted to visualize this. Uh, but I wanted to talk to the USB port at the same time, um, which is really hard to do in web pages. People who are making standards, could we get that into the browser? That would be really awesome. We have more USB. Yeah. Cool. I need, Somebody grab me afterwards and show me how that works. Uh, so this is an, a, a, 
a, an, an FFT, it's called an FFT plot, where I basically view a, a, a portion of the, the frequency spectrum. I've tuned to seven, uh, 27 megahertz, which is uh, the frequency of this. I'm going to make sure this is turned off so it doesn't drive off the table. Uh, and when I, when I press forward, you can see I'm receiving a signal. And it, it, it even, I even uh, have a way of figuring out like the, what is the fundamental frequency. So this is not transmitting on 27 megahertz, it's transmitting on 27.14453, et cetera. So. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. So let's, let's uh, encode a message. Hello, if I can spell hello, JS Congress. So I have a, a string here I want to encode. Um, and it's, uh, I, I calculate all the bits. There's 176 bits uh, all together, including some preamble and, 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 and stuff. Uh, I split that up into symbols because I want to use QAM4 for this, where I basically have the four corners of the, the, of the circle. Um, and so then I modulate this into a wave. Uh, and the, the orange and the green ones here are basically uh, the cosine and the sine wave going from I either minus one or plus one going back and forth. Uh, and if you zoom in here, we can kind of see that the, the, the resulting wave that we're generating is phase shifted back and forth to kind of put the position at the, uh, put the point at the right position that we wanted to at the given time. Um, so I only have one of these radios, so I'm gonna basically uh, pretend that I'm transmitting this <laughs> uh, and receive it uh, using basically software. So it will uh, generate a wave and I've, I'm adding a shit ton of noise to the signal. As you can see, this is the same wave as before. Um, and there was a little bit of dead space in the beginning, so we can figure out if our algorithm correctly can pick this up. Um, and I'm also calculating the signal power, so basically how powerful is the signal. Right now I have a, a manual threshold, uh, so to wh wh when do I consider that a signal or not. In reality, what you want to do, you want to do something called automatic gain control, where you kind of, depending on how far away the, the source is, you, you adjust the volume or the, the, you, the gain of, of how sensitive your equipment is. Um, and then if we, if we take this wave here, we have with a lot of garbage in it, and we demodulate it. Uh, hang on. There's too much noise in the signal. Th th this is proof that it's actually uh, live. Hello, JS Congress. Let's try again. And we successfully recovered the signal. So if you want to get started with this, um, if you only want to receive, you can buy the cheap, the cheap one I showed before. If you want to send as well, you need to buy something a little bit more expensive there. Uh, but it's super fun, and you can do some awesome hacking with it that uh, some of it is legal, is legal some of it is not. <laughs> uh, if you want to control a remote controlled car like this, any toy car, it, you, uh, any car I've tested it with, it actually works because they all buy the same cheap chips from China that apparently all use the same modulation. Uh, you can NPM install Monster Drift. Uh, to talk to this uh, radio called the HackRF, you just do NPM install HackRF. Uh, if you want to learn more about software-defined radio, I recommend going to greatscottgadgets.com slash SDR. That is, uh, it's, it's, it's a website uh, made by the, the, the guy who also made uh, the radio there, and he has some awesome tutorials of basically how this works, all the math behind it, and he's really good at explaining it. I can definitely recommend that. Uh, there is like, I think, 11 video tutorials of about half an hour to an hour each that goes through all the, the theory in, in a really, uh, really nice way. And then finally, of course, uh, I'm learning this as well. So if, if you want, we can collaborate. You can, you can hook me up on, uh, on, on, uh, on Twitter. And with that, uh, danke. <laughs>